Welcome back. In this video lecture, we will talk about three stage compression with flash chambers. In the last lecture, we talked about three stage compression with water intercoolers. Now we'll see what happens when we use a couple of flash chambers together. OK. So here I have my low pressure compressor and there is the a refrigerant vapor refrigerant that enters into the low pressure compressor. OK, and let's say. M1 is the amount of refrigerant that enters into the low pressure compressor. OK, and then uh, after getting compressed, see at here at this particular junction. Uh, there is a mixing of whatever refrigerant that comes out of the low pressure compressor and the intermediate compressor. So for the intermediate pressure compressor, there is another refrigerant that is, uh, it's not another refrigerant, another branch that is entering an in. And let's say that is M3 is the mass of refrigerant that is entering into the intermediate pressure compressor. Let's talk about how, what are the values and uh, we will discuss that a bit later. And see here for the high pressure compressor, you have M5 is the mass of the refrigerant that enters into the high pressure compressor. OK, and uh, that comes from this mass M5 that comes from the second flash chamber and this mass M3 that comes out from the first flash chamber. OK, and here once again at this particular uh, case we have the refrigerant that comes out from the intermediate pressure compressor getting mixed with whatever is coming out of your high pressure compressor. OK, and so let's uh, look at this point M5. OK, so what is the. So when it comes here at this particular point, you can see whatever refrigerant that is coming out of the low pressure compressor, what is whatever refrigerant that is coming out of the intermediate pressure compressor and whatever refrigerant that is coming out of the high pressure compressor, all of them mixed together. And so here you have the total mass of the refrigerant that is coming out, let's say M. So at this particular point, you have the total mass of refrigerant that is entering into the second flash chamber. OK, but then uh, when it goes into the second flash chamber, there is a diversion. One part. Let me change the color. One part is going to go to the high pressure compressor. So this is one direction. The other direction is going to the evaporator or the second flash chamber, let's say. OK, so here. There is one branch that is going into the high pressure compressor. So what is going into the high pressure compressor? OK, so here in the flash chamber, so whatever is going into the high pressure compressor that is going to be the vapor part. The liquid refrigerant is going to go to the next flash chamber. That is the purpose of the flash chamber. It separates the liquid refrigerant from the vapor refrigerant, right? So here the vapor refrigerant splits and it goes to the high pressure compressor and the liquid refrigerant moves on to the next flash chamber. OK, so if we say that the dryness fraction at this particular point is X8, OK, so the amount of refrigerant that goes here. OK, so the amount of refrigerant that goes here is nothing but M times X8. The mass of the refrigerant multiplied by X8, so how much dryness fraction it has, that is the amount of refrigerant that is entering into the high pressure compressor. OK, so whatever is uh, going in this direction, that is going to be the left out part of this M into X8. So whatever is coming out, that is going to be M minus of M times X8. So that is going to be M times 1 minus X8. So that is the amount of refrigerant that is uh, going to the second flash chamber or the first flash chamber. So from the flash, uh, M, M into X8 goes to the high pressure compressor. And M into 1 minus X8 goes to the first flash chamber. OK, and once again, when it comes here, there is another deviation. A part of it goes to the intermediate pressure compressor and another part goes to 
the evaporator. Okay, and if we consider that x10 is the dryness fraction at this particular point, so m into x10, or we already have m into 1 minus x8, so let me erase that. So what goes here is m into 1 minus x8 into x10, that goes to the intermediate pressure compressor, and what comes out here is m minus m into 1 minus x8 into x10. Okay, and if we m is common over here, so it is 1 minus x10 multiplied by 1 minus x8. And I can erase this guy over here. Okay, so this m minus m into 1 minus x10 and into, uh, into n 1 minus x8, that is the amount of refrigerant that is coming in to the low pressure compressor. So your m1 is nothing but m times 1 minus x8 into 1 minus x10. That which is your m3 is nothing but m times 1 minus x8 multiplied by x10. And what is your m5? m5 is nothing but m times x8. And your m is the total mass of refrigerant. Okay, so this is what these are the diversions that we have in this particular circuit. Okay, and the rest, the functions uh, evaporator that is going to be the region or the cold space from which heat is to be extracted. The compressor compresses to a high pressure. Okay, you can see that. So this is your evaporator pressure level. This is your intermediate pressure one. This is your intermediate pressure two, and this is your pressure of the condenser. Okay, so if you look at the state points one to two, one to two, so that is your compression to the higher pressure level. Okay, and you can see that from two, it goes to the condenser. So you can see from two, there is a mixing at four, then there is a mixing at six, and it goes straight away to the condenser. Okay, and then you can see that there is one expansion valve over here. So seven to eight is your expansion, and then there is a branch. One goes to the high pressure compressor. So that is nothing but the vapor part. So the vapor part goes to the high pressure compressor. And the other part goes to the second expansion valve. So 8, 9 is the second expansion valve. And 8, 5 goes to the high pressure compressor. And then what happens in this particular uh, after 9? It goes to the expansion valve. So 9, 10 is expansion. Then what happens? There is a branch again from 10. 10 to 9 is your intermediate pressure compressor. And 10 to 11, it goes to the next expansion valve. Then 11 to 12 is your expansion valve number one. And there it goes to, everything goes to your evaporator one. And if you look at the intermediate pressure compressor, it is compressed from three to four. So you can see it is from three to four. And from four, it goes on to the condenser after mixing at point number six. So that is what I have shown here as the junction. So these are the junction points So four and six. These are junction points. OK, and then at the high pressure compressor, it is again five to six. OK, so from one to two, three to four and five to six, all of these are constant entropy lines. OK, and here while you are solving the problem, you will be able to identify the dryness fraction lines also, and that is shown here the dryness fraction line. So at this particular point, point number eight, it is X8. At point number 10, it is going to be X10. So we will be requiring these two dryness fraction lines while solving the problem, okay? So uh, what will be your refrigeration effect? So your refrigeration effect, that is going to be So if you look at your refrigeration effect, that is going to be between 12 and 1. OK, so the process is. 12, 1, so that is where 
heat extraction is going to take place. So that is obviously H1 minus H12, isn't it? So it is H1 minus H12, no doubt about that. But what is the mass of the refrigerant? The mass of the refrigerant that is entering into the evaporator is this guy. So that is M times 1 minus X8 multiplied by 1 minus X10. So this is my refrigeration effect. What is the work done in case of the low pressure compressor? So LC or LPC, however you want to call it. So for the low pressure compressor, it is, we said it is M1. For the high uh, low pressure compressor, the process is 1, 2, so H2 minus H1. M1, we said it is M times 1 minus X8 into uh, 1 minus X10 multiplied by H2 minus H1. Okay, how about intermediate pressure compressor? So that is going to be M3 multiplied by 3, 4. So that is H4 minus H3. And what did we say here? So this guy is M minus M into 1 minus X8 multiplied by X10 multiplied by H4 minus H3. Okay. And then we have the high pressure compressor. So HC or HPC, however you wish to call it. So that is going to be process 5, 6. So H6 minus H5. And this guy is simply, uh, it's not 1 minus, it's simply X8. M into X8 multiplied by H6 minus H5. So the total work input that is going to be WLC plus WIC plus WHC. So your COP, that would be refrigeration effect divided by the total work input. So this is how we solve the problem in case of the three stage compression with flash chambers. OK, so let's look at a sample problem and see how to solve it. So in all these examples, we are taking ammonia as the refrigerant. OK, and the overall pressure limits that is going to be 2.5 bar. So the lower pressure, the evaporator pressure is 2.5 bar and the highest pressure level is 15 bar. You have intermediate pressures that 5 and 10 bar. OK. The load on the plant is given as 10 ton of refrigeration. So refrigeration effect. That is 10 ton of refrigeration, which means 10 into 3.5 kilowatts, which is 35 kilowatts. OK, and they want us to find the circulation of the refrigerant through the condenser, which is the total mass. They want us to find the mass and the power required to drive the three compressors. So they want us to find WLPC, WIPC, and WHPC. This is what they want us to find. So it's 2.5, 5, 10, and 15. Those are the operating pressure levels. And let's go to uh, the pH chart and see how we can solve this particular problem. OK, so we start with, let's take the red color. We start with 2.5. So this is my evaporator pressure, 2.5 bar. So that is this guy over here. Then you have five. That is intermediate pressure one. Then you have 10. That is intermediate pressure two. And then you have 15, which is the condenser pressure. So this is my 15 bar. So 2.5. 5, 10, and 15. These are my operating pressure levels. OK, we start with 1, so 2.5. So from 2.5, if you draw a horizontal line, so let me say this point over here, this is my point number 1. So you have to travel along the constant entropy line till you reach 2.5, sorry, 5. So this is my 5. So this is my point number two. 
is it no we have to go to the higher pressure level so it's not fixing to here though though it is required we will be coming uh, uh, that that will be another point uh, where we have to uh, only at this side we need uh, that uh, pointing so 20 20 so let's say this guy over here so if you travel along the constant entropy line till you reach the 15 bar so this is my point number 2 okay and then at 5 bar if i come across 5 bar and uh, on the saturated vapor line i fix my point number 3 because that is my entry to the intermediate pressure level then follow the constant entropy line till it reaches the 15 bar line so i have to travel along the constant entropy line so this is my point number 4 then we have 10 bar so this is going to be my point number 5 then travel along the constant entropy line to 15 bar so this is my 6 and then if you you have to draw a straight line from there so this is my point number 7 so from 7 i have to come to 10 okay so here there is going to be a branch one branch goes to point number 5 so it goes to point number 5 and another branch goes to the saturated liquid line so that is point number 9 okay and then from there you drop another perpendicular till 5 bar so that is going to be your 10 so here we have a branch one goes to 11 at the saturated liquid line and another goes to the saturated vapor line to point number 3 so from 11 i'm going to drop a perpendicular to 2 bar so that is going to be my 12 and then again draw a straight line till you reach point number 1 Okay, so point number one is here. So let's see where our two is. So from point number one, so this is my point number two. Okay, so now we have fixed all the points. Let's uh, note down the enthalpy values. So that is. the next step that we have to do so let me take another color here so from one drop a perpendicular so that is between 1400 and 1500 uh, so h1 let's say so let me write it here so h1 is 1440 kilo joule per kilogram okay then if you look at h2 h2 is over here uh closer to 2700 let's say 1720 kilo joule per kilogram Okay, how about point number three? So point number three, let's say one four six zero, and if you look at four, uh, sorry, if five, five is closer to thousand five hundred, so one four nine zero maybe. Four is over here. It is exactly on this line, which is thousand six hundred. H four is thousand six hundred. Q 
kilojoule per kilogram. And then let's look at six. Six is uh, 1,530. So these are on the uh, right hand side. So if you look at left hand side, so H7, H7 is very closer to 400, maybe 390, or let's say 380, 380 kilojoule per kilogram. And this guy is also equal to H8. And H9 is very closer to 300, 310. H9 is 310 kilojoule per kilogram, which is also equal to H10. So H11, this is closer to 200, maybe 220. H11 is 220 kilojoule per kilogram which is also equal to H12. So now we have noted down the values. So let's evaluate the refrigeration effect and the mass flow rate and all those things. OK, so what is going to be the refrigeration effect? So the refrigeration effect in kilojoule per kilogram, that is going to be H1 minus H12. So H1 is 1440 minus H12 is 220. So that was 1220 kilojoule per kilogram. But we also have seen that this guy is also equal to 35 kilowatts. So which means M dot into H1 minus H2, that is 35 kilowatts. So M dot into 1220 is 35. So M dot is 35 divided by 1220. So let's look at it how much from the calculator. So 35 divided by 1220 is 0.029 or 0 0.0287 kilogram per second. If you multiply it with 60, you would get 1.72 kilogram per minute. So this was the uh, first thing that they wanted us to find out, the mass flow rate of the refrigerant that flows through the condenser. So this is your M dot uh, 1.72 kilogram per minute. OK, and then the second question was what is the so once you find out M dot now it is time for us to find out uh, M M1 M3 and M5. So before doing that, let's also note down two more values. What is the value of X at this point eight? So what is the dryness fraction at point eight? So that is something which we need to find out. OK, so where is the dryness fraction line? So you can see. So this is your X is equal to 0.1. So now we have this between 0.1 and 0. Uh, so maybe 0 0.06. X8 is 0 0.06. 6 or 0, 07, how do we call it? Let's say 0 0.06. How about X10? X10 is very close to 0 0.1. So X10, let's say 0 0.08. Okay, right? So let's uh, come back here. X8 is 0 0.06. X8 is 0 0.06. And X10 is 0 0.08. So if you look at the derivations that we have done, M1 is M dot, or let's say M1 dot is 1 minus X8 into 1 minus X10. So that is 1.72 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.06 
into 1 minus 0 0.08. So let's check what that is. In the calculator, 1 minus 0 0.06 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.08 multiplied by 1.72. So that is 1.49. So 1.49 is the amount of refrigerant that flows through the low pressure compressor. So M dot 3 is M dot into 1 minus X8 into X10. So that is 1.72 into 1 minus 0 0.06 into 0 0.08. 1 minus 0 0.06 multiplied by 0 0.08 multiplied by 1.72 is 0 0.13 kilogram per minute. And m dot phi is m dot into 1 minus x8. So 1.72 Sorry, it's m dot into x8. That's all. Sorry about that. It is m dot into x8. So 1.72 into 0 0.06. That's all. That will be a lower value 1.72 into 0 0.06. That is 0 0.1. That's all. So now if I add all these three, 0.1 plus 0.13 plus 1.49 is 1.70. So that that should uh, that should the mass should be balanced. Okay. So now uh, we have found out these values. So let's find out find out WLPC or W dot LPC, which is m1 dot into h2 minus h1 m1 dot is 1.49 what is your h2 minus h1 so h2 is 1720. I'm sorry, this guy is H1 minus H12. So this is 1720 minus 1440. So using the calculator, let's see what is the value that we are getting over here. 1720 minus 1440 is 280 multiplied by 1.49, that is 417.2. Kilojoules per minute. Okay. And then what is W dot IPC? Intermediate pressure compressor. So that is M3 dot into H4 minus H3. So M3 dot is 0 0.13. H4 and H3, let's see how much we have got. So H4 is 1600, H3 is 1460, 1600 minus 1460, 1600 minus 1460. So let's evaluate this. 1600 minus 1460 multiplied by 0 0.13. So that is 18.2 kilojoules per minute. And then W dot HPC. So that is M dot phi into H6 minus H5. So M dot phi is 0.1. H6 and H5, let's look at the values. 1530 and 1490. 1530 
minus 1490 so i think that is 40 1530 minus 1490 is 40 multiplied by point 0.1 is 4 So these are the values that they're asking us to find out and M dot is the value that they're asking us to find out. And if you want to find out the uh, COP, W dot, the net would be W dot LPC plus W dot IPC plus W dot HPC. So that would be 417.2 plus 18.2 plus 4. So how much is that? 417.2 plus 18.2 plus 4. 439.4 kilojoule per minute divided by 60, you would get 7.32 kilowatts. The refrigeration effect is 35 kilowatts. So your COP is refrigeration effect divided by the net work input. So that is 35 divided by 7.32. So 35 divided by 7.32 is 4.78. So your COP is 4.78. So this is how we evaluate a problem that involves three stage compression with flash chambers. Thank you. We'll meet again with the next modification.